Hello and welcome to Teachings in Education. I am your narrator, Frank Avella. Here we're going to explore discovery learning. And the first topic we'll begin with is an introduction to the learning model. Discovery learning is a type of instruction where students interact with the environment while drawing upon prior knowledge and their own experiences. Discovery learning is an approach to inquiry-based learning, where questions are first posed to students and then students must find answers using their own reasoning. Discovery learning should come with a variety of different instructional techniques, many of which we'll cover shortly, but these techniques are based on the principle of learning by exploring. Discovery learning is often credited to Jerome Brunner. However, his ideas were aligned to the work of others in the field, such as John Dewey. So on to the next section, which is the benefit. It's important to note that these benefits are a result of discovery learning literature. In fact, researchers would argue that this model does not work for early and intermediate learners. This learning model is a student-centered approach that focuses on students being actively involved. Learners are given a certain level of autonomy. They are allowed to explore and figure things out on their own. Discovery learning teaches students problem-solving skills. Learners essentially have to, quote, discover the answers or solutions to tasks and problems. Let's not forget the added responsibility that is put on students to essentially learn by doing on their own. Again, that is why the research shows that it works best with advanced learners, not with beginners. The next section is a look at some of the characteristics of discovery learning. This learning model incorporates a hands-on learning approach. Educators can design tasks that require students to build and create as a way to demonstrate knowledge. Learners are encouraged to ask questions to the teacher. The teacher is there as a facilitator of learning. And as a facilitator of learning, there should be minimal teacher involvement. Students are to do and learn on their own, not depend on the teacher. Assessment should not be based on memorization. Memorization is the lowest form of learning and discovery learning is meant to be a higher order thinking process. Lastly, the model focuses on reasoning, with students being required to use deduction principles in order to find solutions and complete tasks. Right now I want to take a quick break, ask that you subscribe to this channel, check out the Teespring store, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, and check the description for resources to my Teachers Pay Teachers store. But back to the lesson discovery learning and the next section is how to prepare a discovery learning lesson the first thing needed is to find a discovery learning assignment or activity you can easily find them on the internet or perhaps design your own activity teachers then have the task of gathering any relevant materials needed for the student to complete the assignment task as students work on the task teachers must become facilitators of their learning most importantly offering guidance in their work as learners are working, teachers must record the process and steps students take. Teachers should also record student results. Next is the feedback stage. Teachers must discuss the student results and processes. Feedback should be in the form of a dialogue with the students. And lastly, if there are any mistakes, afford students the opportunity to try the assignment task over again. It's about them learning from their mistakes. Now, let's take a look at some real classroom examples. One classroom lesson is actually having students write reflections. This can be a reflection or completed task, or just a reflection of what you learned in the classroom. Case studies are becoming more and more popular in the classroom. As they have some real world relevance, students can analyze situations and teachers can place students in small working groups. Puzzles are yet another way to integrate discovery learning now these puzzles must be based on academic content. It's like pattern discovery, for example. Just carry out experiments, even to allow them to design their own experience as they advance in the grade levels. Role playing can be utilized in a number of different ways. Have students role play where students become doctors and patients, and the doctor must identify the illness. Continuing, we'll take a look at the teacher's role in all this. Teachers first have to ensure that students have a minimal basic knowledge on the subject. However, it is still up to the students to figure out the solutions, identify relevant knowledge, and apply that knowledge. Proper guidance during discovery tasks may be the most important responsibility of the teacher, but be careful that too much guidance takes away from the theory of discovery learning. There are going to be solutions where learners become completely lost. In that case, teachers need to step in and should show students exactly how the task should be completed. Feedback again is necessary on behalf of the teacher. Teachers need to step in and offer suggestions. 
Now, onto the last section of the video, which is the criticism on discovery learning. First, weaker students are likely to fall behind in this model. That's something to keep in mind. Second, there is some research against this model, as mentioned earlier. Younger and intermediate learners may not receive the full benefit as compared to high-performing students, which do very well in these activities. Lastly, the cognitive overload that comes from putting unprepared students in a complex and difficult learning environment may just be too much for them to handle. Right now, I want to say thank you for your time. Please subscribe to this channel. Check out the video. Check out the, check out the Teespring store for some cool stuff. And check out the description as well. Thank you very much.